Welcome, Janine, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to do this with you, Teresa. Me too. So we've worked together a long time. So for our listeners who don't know that, I volunteer at My Stuff Bags. I'm on the board. Um, it's a wonderful cause, and I've really wanted to get Janine on uh, to this program because they do such good work, and at this time, with everything being so crazy, I think it would be nice to focus on something positive in the world, yeah. and that also, again, can help you by volunteering or giving. So, Janine, I, I know you know this, but one of the reasons that I have, I, how many years has it been now? <laughs> I don't even know. I, I am. I'm amazed. I've been doing this 22 years, and I'd say, Teresa, that you and I have probably worked together 15, 16 years. Yeah, it's been a long yeah. time. We've and have been through a lot. <laughs> yes, we have. Um, one of the things that, you know, in addition to, of course, I'm an avid volunteer, and, yes. sure, and I have been for a long time, but one of the reasons I dedicate so many hours to this organization is not only because of the good work you do, but because I love the model. It is so based in community and volunteering and mm -hmm. things like that. So I was wondering if we could just start on that happy note. Like, could you talk about yeah, the, how it uh, works? Well, here's our My Stuff bag. We give these bags to abused, neglected, abandoned, and homeless children all across the United States. Uh, these are kids who've gone through a really rough time, had a tough experience, have to be removed from home, or are running away from home, going into a domestic violence shelter with mm -hmm. mom, whatever may be the case. And the really sad thing is they don't get to bring their belongings with them. Most of the time it's an emergency. They have to go quickly into foster care or a shelter and they don't have any of their things to take with them. They don't get to have things of their own. And um, we feel that children really care about what's tangible and right now and that they can hold in their hands. So the great thing about this is we get to give them a My Stuff bag. And um, it's wonderful. We fill it up with donated items and I can show you those. And we give a child back some security, some stuff to hold on to, some clothes for school the next day. And it's all a happy thing and a good thing and a cheerful thing at an uncheerful time. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime, yeah. Um, now, though, with this disruption, I think is what they're calling it now. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's... Um, what's happening? What's happening well, with the bags? Well, the bags is working very hard to be ready for all of the children that will be coming into care over the next several months. We know already that um, from the recession and other proof that we've had that domestic violence increases greatly mm -hmm. at times of financial stress when parents are losing jobs and when people are isolated and all the circumstances that are going on now. Also, what makes me really sad is all the kids that um, are on the edge or at risk of, of abuse or, or are in foster care, school is like an anchor for them. It's a, it's a place where they get their services, it's a place where they get routine and stability, and that stability is gone now. So what we're doing in a positive way is getting ready for when all of these agencies are able to bring in kids again, and actually we're serving some that have kids right now. Good. And we're, but we're getting ready and uh, to get more bags into the hands of those children as quickly as possible. Wonderful. So, yeah. So um, we're um, not able right now to have our doors open in our volunteer center. So we can't have volunteers come in. Uh, quite fortunately, I uh, have two incredible guys that are roommates in the warehouse. And they are working like crazy, filling up little red toiletry bags. And they're waiting for our blue duffels to come in from China. They're going to be here in a couple of weeks. We know they're on the water. They're going to be here. We've got a lot of stuff collected in the warehouse. And they're just going to start stuffing like crazy. And then um, Bob and I are going to go in on the weekends and, <laughs> and stuff. And we're all doing our social distance thing. But, you know, um, it can be done. And we will. We will do it. Yeah. Now, how many volunteers do you normally have that are unable to come in right now? Oh, my gosh. We, we probably have 2,000 volunteers go through our building every year. Wow. So we have school children. All the local schools and schools from far away will come in. They'll bring in a class, and they'll stuff the bags. We have, like, an assembly line process to stuff the bags. We have church groups. We have, we're surrounded by some wonderful businesses, Bank of America and Amgen and Baxter and um, large corporations that come in and do networking events with us. And altogether, it, it, it's approximately 2,000 people. Wow. Then we have all the individuals that come in. So we have steady groups of, of people that come in. And um, these are the people I miss a lot right now. I really do. 
Sue and Oli and Bonnie and 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 <laughs> all of them and 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 Kathy and, and they're sweet, precious people that come all the time and help us uh, uh, with everything we need to do to get a bag ready to go out the door. Yeah. And um, I miss them a lot. I miss I miss everybody. I you know that's my one big thing is I love Buzz. Yeah. <laughs> at my stuff bags. I love the feel of the place. I love what we're doing. It's all about grassroots participation in something. It's all about giving. Everybody can do something. Everybody can give something. They can contribute to the bag. They can come and stuff the bag. They can send us money to get the bags out the door. And it's that group participation thing that is um, the magic. Yeah, I, I think it's shocking for a lot. Of, I know in your office, Simone is in the office alone. Yeah. <laughs> trying to hold down the fort. Yeah, she <laughs> got, is so good too. She's such a sweetheart. And the two guys are in the back alone. Yeah, and I lecture normally, every day. Every day I'm lecturing, don't you dare go near yeah. those guys in the warehouse. <laughs> but it's just... <laughs> They're already exposing each other if they are. They work together and they live together. Right, right. You know, she's, um, she's been great. She's a rock. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's just such a drastic difference from how the, how it normally is there with the, the, oh. the you're right, the buzz of all the people coming in and out. So I think there's well, a lot the of people. Feeling, the feeling in the place is always just as, feel is just good. It just, yeah. there's a purpose. People know that it's all about the bag. Okay, that's it. We're not about any politics or anything else. Yeah. We just want to give comfort to kids who seriously need it. Yeah. And, and so that just, that's the aura. It just goes that way. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I, I consider it a hugely blessed thing in my life I truly do it, yeah. it's a wonderful thing yeah. um well, well we'll since, get back there we'll be doing it I'm yeah yeah well that, that's actually what I was going to ask you is so since people can't come in and volunteer yes um is there something people could do from home that would help so that when you get back in there you're like you hit the, run, the ground running so to speak yes so here is the, the situation this is a, a blanket the blanket is the soul of every My Stuff bag. Now, the other things we put in the bag are stuffed animal. We always make sure there's toiletries, um, uh, coloring books, crayons. Everything depends on the age and, and gender of the child. And so we make this as age and gender appropriate as we possibly can. So we do eight different types of bags. But the soul of every single My Stuff bag is the blanket. And we have a no-sew blanket project where you just get fleece, a yard and a half of fleece, and you cut, no sewing, no being fancy, and you tie these little knots, and it makes a beautiful blanket for a child. And so what we did right away, um, we've had this project going forever, and people all across the country knit, crochet, quilt, and send us these no sew blankets. So we've been very fortunate that almost every blanket that's been in every My Stuff bag has been a handmade blanket of some kind, which is hugely important to a child. Yeah. But uh, right away, we um, had already bought a couple of bolts of fabric and um, right before downtown LA closed, I sent our two guys down there to our, our person that we work with downtown and they got eight more bolts of fabric. So they brought that back and they've been cutting pieces of fabric like crazy. So all of our local volunteers and local community can come pick up fabric and make a no-sew blanket. Great. The kids are getting community service hours. So the children are making them at home. Moms and dads are making them, they're doing them as a family, and it's just been gangbusters. And then everybody who's not in our immediate area can go online and, and get fabric, and there's lots of opportunities online. I'm not going to say any names because they haven't given me any fabric yet, so when they want to give me fabric, then I might say their name. But there are fabric companies um, that you can find online and just buy the materials. The directions are on our website at mystuffbags.org. It's super simple. Even I can do it. So it's something that everybody can do and then just send us blankets for the children because we want to put a blanket in every My Stuff bag. Absolutely. And then, of course, anyone out there that crochets, quilts, or knits. Oh, we'll take it, yeah. We, and we've had, as you know, you've seen some absolutely gorgeous blankets. And I'm always so impressed with uh, people who will make a beautiful blanket for a child that they're never going to see. Uh, but whose heart they're going to touch just by their yeah. handiwork and then they're going to touch the child's heart. You know, I, 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 uh, I don't know why I thought this, but I thought, well, at least one benefit of, um, you know, the sort of the shutdown of everything is I'll have time to finish the blanket I started a month ago for you. <laughs> and still haven't gotten back to it because I've been yeah, so busy. I, you and I could have a whole other conversation on how busy we are right now. Oh, but I'll get to it. I know. It's, 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 it's three quarters of the way done, but I'm, I, I crochet. I don't knit, um, and I'm not uh, a great crocheter, but I can do a yeah, I'm really impressed with somebody who can crochet and have it turn out even. I, I've tried so many times. 
I, I finally figured out that I just don't like to stop and count the chains and make sure. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be it. <laughs> don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, also, Teresa, um, you know, people who don't want to make blankets or, or want to do something in addition, we really are going to need a lot of funding. Yeah. We really need a lot of help because no matter, you know, the glory of this is everything that's in the bag is donated. Right. So a child gets a bag and knows that, that a lot of people cared about them. The difficulty is keeping enough funding coming in to mm. ship the bags out to children because we serve children all across the United States. Right. And, and we try to do 20,000 My Stuff bags every year. And that's a lot of, you know, and we have to pay for these duffels and the toiletries and little red toiletry bag. Mm. And we have to turn on the lights in the warehouse and all that sort of thing. So um, others who want to help, please help us with funding. Just go to our website and donate online. Take a look at the video and everything about us. These kids um, are going to need us desperately. Absolutely. And I think that that's one of the things um, that people don't realize is that during an emergency, mm -hmm. during a normal, let's call it a normal, this is not even a normal emergency. No, this is weird. <laughs> but during an, a normal emergency, people out of you know, the goodness of their heart switch and donate to whatever that emergency yeah. is without realizing that then all of the agencies that are just out there plugging away with literally, I mean, you have a tiny, tiny staff, it's all volunteer run, but there are still yeah. expenses. And yeah. so I think that's one important thing to keep in mind because the, the, the same kids that you've been serving since mm -hmm. 1998, I mean, not the same kids, but <laughs> the same number of kids uh, are still in need. And so I, I'm glad yeah. that, that you shared that because it does actually help the giver as much as the receiver. Oh, absolutely. I, I have seen that over and over again, um, yeah. where, where people that come in to volunteer or, or you know, um, a lot of people write to us and, and talk about the joy they get from being a part of, a part of this. And yeah. they're all wonderful, incredible donors in our hearts. And um, everybody can be a volunteer to this in some way from any, any place. Yeah. In the United States or beyond, actually. Um, I was going to tell you a little something that in, in, in thinking about the children that we serve, my, um, my five-year-old granddaughter has taken, who's quarantined with her lovely little family, her brother and her mom and dad, and they're all beautifully all isolated together in their house and they're following all the rules and all the activities and she's being homeschooled and in all the ways that we want a child to be taken care of. And uh, so this little five-year-old is taken to saying, when the virus is over, I'm gonna learn to roller skate. When the virus is over, I'm going to have a party. You know, this, <laughs> it, it's so hopeful and optimistic. Yeah. And certain. Yeah. And, you know, this big word uncertainty that everybody keeps saying. Yeah. And I, I think that the children we serve have already had to deal with so much uncertainty. They don't know if they're going to be taken care of. They're not going to be in school right now. They have had to run away from violence. They've already seen that life can't be stable or they're not in a stable home environment. So, you know, what we're all feeling about uncertainty pales in comparison to the uncertainty that they've already had in their lives. And now one thing I know for certain is it's going to get harder. It's yeah. really going to get harder for these kids. Absolutely. And they're going to suffer more and we really need to be ready to take care of them and all of the agencies that serve these children and the agencies that do things like we do at My Step Down need a lot of support. These kids are the most vulnerable ones. For a lot of us, our children will eventually go back to school. They've got their stability in their home. We've got devices for them. Right. They're being taken care of right now and they've got security there. And for these kids, I hate to think that if you know people don't stop paying attention to them, how much worse it's gonna be, how much yeah. harder, and how many more homeless families or kids, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, this other thing that I keep hearing is, People saying, I just want to help. Well, you can. Yeah. You can. And we all feel so much better when we're helping. And I'm, uh, as much as, you you know, we're talking about how busy we are, like, in, you know, mm -hmm. people are saying, I'm so bored. And I'm like, give me one boring minute here because I'm, <laughs> I'm struggling here. I'm trying so hard to get all the funding and all these things going and make sure we keep being ready for these kids. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful and happier, I know for sure, because I get to help, because I get to do something. Yeah. And, and I have a purpose and a meaning, and, and I think that that's something everybody can realize and, and do. At this I time. agree. And I agree. So much better. It and is. at a time when everyone's focused on sickness, it's like the healthiest thing you can do is yeah. 
yeah. contribute in some way because it does. I mean, even scientifically, we know it improves our health. So yeah, I'm all for that. You know, Teresa, one thing that you, you taught me a long time ago, because you and I went through the recession together. Yeah. And <laughs> I remember it was a very tough time for nonprofits during the recession. Yes, it was. And you would come in and you'd say, just think about today. Just focus on now. What can you do right now? Yeah. What, what, what's going to happen right in this little space of time? Don't keep focusing on the future because you just need to take care of now. And it's the best lesson yeah. ever. And it's really helping me now. No, that, along that's with this, fantastic along with to this hear. One, along with this one that you also taught me. Just breathe. Yes, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> I am saying that a lot every day, and I'm having to do that a lot every day. Oh, no kidding. Now, speaking no. of that, before we close, how are you doing personally? Like, how long have you been homebound now? A little longer than everyone else. Yeah. Um, four, four weeks, four and a half weeks. It just so happened that I stayed home to do an interview on the landline at home because the phones at work weren't working mm. very well, and we were having a little static problem. So I stayed here to do an interview and that was it and I it's over a month I think yeah ago um and it was I stayed home that day and the very next day we did our store run and that's it wow. we're both pretty vulnerable yeah. um and just decided and my uh, besides which my my daughters all made us promise <laughs> we wouldn't go anywhere or do anything. They were so worried about us. You know, my husband's had a huge health risk over the last couple of years. I had a health problem over the last year. And so um, just to be super careful, we're, yeah. we're staying in. And, and our, yeah, how's it going? It, it, it's hard, but I just stay in this moment and I keep breathing and I keep <laughs> saying, I, I got some work to do and I don't have time to sit around moping, yeah. and whatever. And that's healthier for me. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, I'm glad you're taking care of yourself. Yes. I wish everyone would follow it and be as strict as this to just stay home, even though it can get, you know, tough sometimes. Mm -hmm. It'll make this all pass so much faster and we can get back to something. More oh, yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. 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 It, right. it will make it will keeping, I think keeping busy. So yeah. make blankets. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I want to, I want to say one more time, the name of the website. Okay. It's my stuff. S T U F F bags.org and you can go online to see what they're doing there or what they were doing up till just recently yeah, right. <laughs> uh, it's it's a wonderful wonderful organization that serves a lot of kids and i hope you keep it in mind if you feel like you need to do something for someone else whether it's to help them or to make yourself feel better so thank you janine so much for oh, joining thank you us. so much Teresa. i love you i love you too we'll talk soon thank you bye stay bye. safe bye i will you too bye bye